All right, welcome back. We're going to take a look at serving files from our Golang web server. So here at localhost, I have three different files that we're serving from a folder on our web server. So we have our dog.jpg, we have our JavaScript file, and we have our PDF as well. And there's several other different file types that you can serve here. I believe you get the idea. And our web server works like a regular web server, so we can still register different routes to be handled uh, differently. So here we're serving our Hello World HTML just like we could serve up any other page. So let's go ahead and take a look at our application to see how this runs. So obviously to serve up these files, it's going to need to know where these files exist. So our main.go file is in our file server directory. And inside here, the file server directory, we have our public folder. And this is going to hold our dog.jpg, our main.js, and our PDF file as well. So we're creating a new variable to tell where this stuff is. And the data type is http.dir, short for directory. So this is a data type in the HTTP package. And we're just passing in this path and we're going to go ahead and change it to that data type. And we're just printing it off down here to show that yes that is the, that particular data, data type. So as you can see here, yes it is http.dir. Now once we've created that we're going to go ahead and pass that to our next function which is our HTTP file server. And if we take a look at file server uh, file server it's going to take it's going to take a file system data type and it's going to return a handler so let's take a look at that all right file server is going to take a file system so it's going to return a handler that serves http requests with the contents of the file system rooted at root so where that root exists. And as we're looking at this, just, just as a heads up, if we're passing in a you know, what it says here as a file system, and I said earlier we're passing it you know, our directory data type. Our directory data type has a method open. And if we look at our file system data type also in the HTTP, HTTP package, it also has this one particular method. So a directory has this method, so it is also a file system. So that's why I can just pass in the directory type because it's also a file system. Anyway, we pass that in, and then it's gonna hand us back a handler. So looking at our application here, we're getting back that handler and we're sand, saving it into my handler. And so notice here we have http.handle. This function is similar to http handle func that we've been using for quite a while now, but it is different. This one here, handle func, is expecting a function. This one here is expecting a particular, the handler uh, interface. So you might say, okay. Both of them have the ability to take in a request and write a response, write to a response writer. So you might say, hey, what's even the point of that? Well, if you have an interface, you can do a little bit more than with just a function. You know, you can create a struct, for instance, and you can, you know, make it of that type of interface and add a whole bunch of different things to that that struct to just to make it a little bit a little bit easier. If you really want to uh, do a lot more with it. You can do more using this, you know, because it's a lot easier to attach a whole bunch of that stuff to a struct than with this one, where if you want to attach a whole bunch of different fields or something or just anything to it, with mostly methods, you know, it just wouldn't make as much sense as being able to attach it to a struct. So you could do more with with HTTP handle if you really want to get fancy with it. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look 
back in the documentation of that. Okay, so we have our two functions here. We have our handle and our handle func. So like I said, handle func, it's going to take a pattern string, just like handle's going to take a pattern string, you know, what path it's going to register to. And this one takes our function, which has the parameters response writer and a pointer to a request. Now this one, like I said, it takes a handler. So it's not quite the same thing. So while the other one is a function with a response writer and a request, this one has a method for, for serving HTTP, which has a response writer and a request. So it's, it's similar, but it's not the same thing. Um, if you may, like I said, if you really want to get fancy with it and create a struct and do more with it, you can do that and then make it of this type. And you could go ahead and you know add whatever you want to to that struct as well. But serve HTTP, HTTP should write reply headers and data to the response writer and then return. Um, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at how it writes those headers as well because usually, usually the stuff that we're writing to is going to be a you know, the HTML type. As you can obviously tell, you know, some of it may, might be plain text or a PDF or a JavaScript, whatever those files we were serving. So let's go back and take a look at that. Okay, and so we were handing it, hey, registering this path to this handler as opposed to just a function with parameters, response writer, and request, a pointer to a request. Uh, anyway, Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one here. Let's, this here is doing the same thing. So let me block this out. We're going to go ahead and do all of this in a single line. I went ahead and broke that up out there so you could see what's going on. So here we're, pass, we're creating a new variable of type HTTP.dir. So this is our, our new variable that we're creating and it's going to have this path and this is just going to get passed all in here to the http dot file server and it's going to go ahead and register file http dot file server is going to return our handler so not a function not not the usual function we're used to but a handler and that's why we have to use HTTP.handle because we're returning that particular interface. We're not just returning a regular function. And so that gets registered to this path. And if we go back to our application, and it works. And while we're here, like I said, it writes to the headers. We go to network, refresh it, click on dog, and here we go. Response headers, like I said, it writes to the headers, and this one, and it knew it wasn't a usual HTML file, it went ahead and wrote to it, say, hey, uh, browser, you have an image slash JPEG file, so handle it accordingly. And content type, as it could see, like, hey, this was a .js file, this is JavaScript, so it's serving it to us accordingly. And finally, our PDF. Again, it's writing to those headers for us, and it's saying, "Hey, this was of type, you know, a dot PDF, you know, extension. This is a PDF file, and so it's it's writing to that content type uh, value for us on our header, our response header." And just to show we can use a relative path as well. 
Now, when we're creating our directory uh, variable, this one we're putting a dot in front, and that's just saying, hey, from wherever main exists inside that, that directory, go ahead and look directly inside of there. And so it's not going to look for the files directly inside there because we said, hey, look inside that directory and look inside of public, and it's going to be inside of public. And that's how this one finds those, those three. There we go. So that way, just showing that, hey, yeah, you can use a relative path as well. Now, here's something I've seen some people get caught up on and even post it on some question and answer sites. Uh, on this one, if we're at slash public, this is not going to work because if I have an incoming uh, request at slash public, and it's already, and then it's going to go ahead and look inside of this directory. Well, it's going to be at slash public public. It's it's not going to work. So let's go ahead and crash this real quick to show that. Page not found. There we go. But if you uh, run into some of these issues or inconveniences, you can always use the http.strip prefix. So this one is anytime we're at slash public slash anything, um, it's going to go ahead and use this strip uh, prefix. And this is basically going to take this and strip it off of there because we're adding it back on ourselves here anyway. It's just so you don't have, because there is no, you know, from file server, there is no public slash public. There's not another folder inside of public. That wouldn't make any sense. So this is one way of doing it. Oh, like I said, we're at slash public. There we go. So we're at public um, without the strip prefix on there. It would have tried to take us to slash public public. You know what? Let's actually go back there because I don't believe I actually tried it at slash public. So this should be the one that doesn't work. There we go. Just to show, yes, it still doesn't work. Because behind the scenes, we're going at slash public, and then it's adding another slash public on top of that. And I wouldn't recommend doing it this way, but I guess technically, you know, it would work. Um, it's telling it to serve it at root, but being that the incoming path is going to be at slash public, I guess it still technically works. There we go. Yep. Still works. But anyway, just uh just remember, you know, in short. You know, we got to have our directory, which is the same thing as a file server. If you see on you know, the file server functions looking for a file server, well, they both have that same method, so it's of that same interface, so it still satisfies. So, you got to tell it where it's at. You know, you got to return a handler or our HTTP dot handle, so it will register a path to that particular handle, and then it can execute it with the method on that particular handle. But anyway, that's how you serve files from your Golang web server. A couple of different ways to do it. It's a couple of things to be aware of when you're, you know, if you're not serving it from root, like a lot of times you might want to serve it from something different like slash public. You might have to use this HTTP strip prefix uh, function. Um, but anyway, 
I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.